It's going slow, not going live as fast as I want. <clears throat> All right, StreamYard. What up? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to look at the people's faces. Not good. Hey, Johnny <laughs> Depp. Johnny Depp news. Johnny Depp is in London suing the Sun tabloid for calling him a wife beater because of his ex, Amber Heard, leaked stories about abusive behavior after their split. Now, Depp in court admitted to drinking, taking Coke, taking pills. He was addicted to painkillers, plus addicted to uh, Roxycodone, and he had long periods of blackouts, which doesn't necessarily explain his abuse of Heard, but does shed some light on his performance in Alice Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I did it. I don't know. I didn't like, I didn't like that. 1,000 Questions is an entertaining discussion of marriage. We aren't telling you to do or feel or change anything about your life. Really, just listen and enjoy. And if you need real help, find a professional for your specific problem. We don't know you. How could we speak to your deal? Okay, have fun. Hello, everybody. I'm Brad Tassel. This is the 1000 Marriage Questions show. Uh, I don't know where Donna Wilburn is. Maybe she'll join us in a second. Uh, but I do want to start. How's your marriage going? Can you answer that question for me? Is, is everything good? Are you, are you in love? Are you friends? Are you happy? Are you struggling? What's going on? I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Last night was my wife's birthday. Uh, we had a fun night uh, for her birthday. We went to a uh, Went to a movie. We went and saw Spencer, uh, another movie about a marriage. And I'll ask Don about this when she gets here too, about Prince Charles and, and Lady Diana's marriage. And uh, uh, we had dinner and we came home and I just couldn't get over how contented and happy and thrilled I was with my situation after seeing such a scary one. So here's Donna, everybody. Hey, Donna, how you doing? Good. Good. So uh, I was having a bad hair moment and I had to like make sure that this went like this and it was going like that. Why, why, why do you care? It looks fine. Well, your hair's going to look fine. It's important. It's important. Now you're doing your makeup like you're in a rear view mirror. So uh, <laughs> that looks lovely. Do you, do you do this for sessions? You got a couple come in, you run in and you're doing your hair in a little mirror. Uh, like fluffing. Okay, hold on, hold just, on. You hold just on. do your, just, you okay. can start talking about your, your problems. Let me get my hair. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let yeah, me get okay. some lipstick on. Uh, yeah, yeah, kids, bad, yeah, got it. Yeah, uh-huh. Meanwhile. So, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, you're doing your makeup. <laughs> so we went, Janet and I, it was her birthday yesterday. And we went and saw, birthday. yeah, we went and saw Spencer last night, the Lady Die um. movie. And this had to have been totally made up. Now I get Prince Charles is a jerk. He was having sex with Camilla uh, Bones, whatever her name was beforehand. Matter of fact, I did a joke about the movie. I said that uh, it was mostly Princess Di in the movie, but there was a background presence of uh, Parker Bowles, whatever, Camilla Parker Bowles on the phone saying, yeah, the tunnel is the best place to get her. But uh, so that was a terrible joke. So anyway, because she died in the tunnel with the paparazzi. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But <laughs> Princess Diana, I know they were all treated her bad and stuff, but this movie showed her to be a f nutbag, just really? constantly nuts and acting wild and couldn't take anything and just like a petulant child who pushes back against anything like... Like, I'm not going to wear, the, I'm not going there. I'm not eating this soup. I'm going to be as late as I can. I'm going to prove to you. You know, it just, I was like, okay, I get, but she kind of knew what she was getting into. And I guess they were pushing her and it is, a, but, but I saw, you know, if, if that's how she acted in my marriage, I'd be like, I want you out too. <laughs> you're crazy. You're, she was, and she was also like, seeing things and and everything's against her behind i just it was what the I, heck like who wrote that 
I, some German guy or something. Yeah, it's well, they had intimate yeah, moments I mean, where the kids, like that, yeah, would well, be like, tolerated. yeah, where like the kids and the mom, these no one told this person, they were just making stuff up. And, uh, and I get it, you know, the royal family is nutbags and they're horrible people. And I understand why Harry and Meghan and them left, but, but if she was that wonked out, I, I understand. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to handle it either. <laughs> I was like, I was like, if I acted that way, you'd throw anybody out. It's just, I don't know. So the Although point I I'm making you know, that does happen. Those, there are relationships where people act like that. I know. And, just, and they're still together like 20 years in. That's true. And they're just, and you, cause I understand like Prince Charles with his stiff upper lip, you have to be two people. You have to act like this to the public and this privately, but she couldn't do either. She had to be, you know, and, and everything. What was amazing too, is though, that the Royal family, the Queen, everything is so strict your entire life, how you walk into every meal you eat, how you sit in every room. You, I mean, I don't see how anybody could take that, but it's just like a kid. You make it, you try to make it worse. Your goal is to make it even worse, not to get out of it, not to change, just it, so it hurts you even more. Yeah, I just self self sabotage. Yeah. Self sabotage. You know, why? Well, that that would say she had the maturity of a toddler then. I, I would say she did. Yes. I don't think she was mature enough or understood it. And of course, she was right. He's cheating. He never wanted her in the first place just because she was hot and she'd look good for the public. And she'd put out a couple of kids where Camilla was a dried up old nothing. But uh and but he still wanted her. But still, it's just so self-sabotage. Yeah. Not all about looks. It's not, not all about, about looks. looks. Not all about looks. So, okay. So which leads me to this first question, which I think is a brilliant question that I think about all the time. And that is, and you can say he here too. Would you, here's somebody really changed their mind. What the heck? They, they really changed their mind. Would you marry her again? Okay. So I'm going to start with I saying would. that. You would marry your husband again. No, yes. I would marry me. Yes, your husband would marry you again. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure he would. But <laughs> oh god, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Everyone. So humble. You I'm are so, so humble. humble. Yes, yes. Your husband, not so much. You'd probably pick a different one. But uh, so, first of all, I would ask Prince Charles and Diana, would you do this again if you had it to go back and start over? And I'm guessing they would say no. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. But I answer this question in the fact that I think about this a lot. I go back in my head thinking, what a joy it would be back. Do you ever think about going back and reliving your life? And every time I think about it. Like, can I yeah. do it over differently? Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. You, have to, you have to go back to the same time period and the same time goes by. But yes, I think about this all the time. And I think back to first how young I want to go back to. I don't want to go back to too young because then there's a, I mean, although I had a great childhood, it was fan stinking tastic. But if I had to go back and choose like starting at college, I would, or even earlier when I finished high school, I've always in my mind tried to find my wife earlier, like contacted her when she was still in high school. Oh, oh, like and you would to let her know your your actual wife earlier than you actually did. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Try to get her when she was really hot. But uh yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> get her. Yeah, get her at 16, 17 when woo. but uh well and because to save her from a lot of the trouble she might that she went through and stuff like that and yeah. early relationships. So uh I I have I have thought what would have what would have happened if I'd have married the other one of these others instead, but I never really draw that out in my head to think it would have been anything. Of course you had your kids in there. You want your kids to be exist. I know, right? Like if it didn't go that way, would you have these children? Yeah. They but like that. But I always say you wouldn't know you didn't have them. So you'd have different children. So it really doesn't. People who say, thank God I did all these horrible things and got pregnant at 
you know, 16 and we never stayed together and my kid never had two parents or I wouldn't have that kid. Yeah, but you wouldn't know you didn't have that kid. You would have kids with somebody older that would maybe be that kid. That kid wouldn't exist in the first place. So I know all you right, like all having all that right. kid. You're going in like so many circles right now. It is way too early for this. Is that too ethereal for you? The thought yeah. of like philosophical, who doesn't exist? Like way too much. Way too much. Would you I change any... Yeah. I was thinking this the other day because when I grew up, when I was in high school, um, I had such high anxiety, such high anxiety that I wouldn't talk to anybody. I wouldn't like look anybody in the eye. I would just be like hiding in a little corner like this. Like, don't talk to me. Such high anxiety. And I was thinking this the other day. I'm like, if I had a strategy to overcome that anxiety in high school, it would have been a whole different ball game. When did you get that? Was it, you know, starting to work with Playboy? What was it? What was the... Uh... Yeah, it's probably my first photo shoot where they were <laughs> like, let's get naked. And I'm like, yeah. toss that anxiety out the wow. window. Wow. Naked time. <laughs> no, I would say probably in my 30s, I started coming out of it. And by the time in my 40s, I was like, really had let go of it. But like, I could have had a really fun teen years. I did nothing. Yeah. I did not go to one dance. I did not go to one activity. I did not have any friends. I did not have boyfriend, girlfriend, didn't do homecoming, didn't do prom. Did oh my nothing. gosh. Yeah. And all just because of anxiety. Me, me, me. Mm -hmm. What were you scared? Have you looked into that? What were you scared was going to happen if you did those things? No, I was scared of human contact. Like I was scared of talking to people. I was scared that like, I don't know. I was I had a very emotionally intense mother who okay. humans were scary to me. So I would avoid humans. How did your mother, she was emotionally intense, but how would she make you scared of you? She would, was she overbearing? Was she, no, she's what crazy. was she doing? She was crazy. She's okay. a crazy Turkish lady who she uh, was by the way you were there when she passed away a couple weeks ago yeah 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 okay so she um very uh loud screaming aggressive mm -hmm. crazy hitting you with random objects like just crazy well and because because they've done studies too about boys young boys who have aggressive mothers who try who are trying to make them tough do just the opposite they turn their boys into scared wimps because the mom is so aggressive at yeah uh, i would say maybe i would say my brothers probably have a sensitivity to female yeah. emotion like mm -hmm. it's not something they want to hang with um but i think the guy the boy has the option to go we did have a dad so i yeah. think they leaned more towards the aggressive response to drama versus mm. the um you know, me, 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 me. They don't do this. De-escalation. Yeah. Or yeah. being, yeah. Being submissive. Like, I'm out of here. You know, like that kind of thing. Well, cause in my house, there were no rules growing up. Just do oh, whatever you want. Good. You're fine. Parents are very calm. Uh, there should have been maybe more requirements of us. Uh, but in a way it was, it didn't make us scared of the world, which was nice. I've that, always that been, nice. I yeah. was scared of the world. Yeah. Because my mom and dad were out there doing it every day. Uh, God knows where they were just out, gone, doing it. And we were, did whatever we wanted was fine. <laughs> my brothers and sisters kind of slid into a little drugs here and there, a little party. I went to my friend's house whose dad was a doctor and they were really strict, really strict. Mm -hmm. So I got half the strict over there, which is why I'm a little anal as opposed to everybody else in my family who was just let it be, dude. It's a, hey, man. Parents? Were they hippies? No, no. My dad was Fonzie. And okay. my mom was a kind of a mousy accountant, uh, very smart, so they're just like... but they, but they, uh, but yeah, they, but they were just so focused and driven on work and stuff like that. And they also didn't. And my dad had been treated horribly by his mother. She was a Catholic mm -hmm. Italian, beat the kids, ask questions later. And he never, never wanted to have that kind of thing in his house. When he had kids, we will not, you know, a discipline ish but we are not going to be this brow beating, hateful slap them across the face. If they look at us the wrong way, kind of family. Uh, so, so we didn't have to, didn't get a lot of that. Now my mom, because she had three boys, my brothers, we were nuts. 
So she had to deal with quite a bit of stuff and get mad, but it was only because we were very rambunctious boys. But, uh, but it didn't, it, we, you know, we all, and now my brother, my middle brother though, was kind of scared of success because he would start to succeed and then just quit. Like he was offered a, uh, to, to be the, uh, what do they call above a manager when you run a bunch of stores, uh, manager. district manager of a huge thing. And he was like, Nope, car. He's Nope. Nope. Quit it all. Just couldn't handle or want all this responsibility. So, uh, so that's, that's very stress. interesting. Yeah. Too much stress. And I don't, I don't, I don't dig a ton of responsibility either. I am responsible for everything I do, but, uh, luckily I don't have to do anything. So that's good. You guys all look similar. Does like if you're hanging around each other, yeah. like yeah, they're brothers. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, my brother Steve, not so much, but my brother Bruce and my dad and I, because my brother and sister have a different father, so they. Oh, okay, okay. And my brother Steve doesn't look like my mom, so uh, so yeah, no, we look exact. My mom and my dad, my brothers and sisters, could never say I was adopted as a kid because I looked exactly <laughs> like my mom and dad. <laughs> there, there's just no way they were like, "We're adopted, and we want out of here because you're so horrible." <laughs> you're stuck. As a child. Too yeah, bad. you're stuck. I'm stuck with these. People. Matter of fact, I have a song about it, Two Step Christmas, about being <laughs> the only kid that we know that kid is it. So last thing on this, uh, would you marry again? So I'm guessing your husband, you would say, would you change anything from the beginning going through, though? I would. I would. I probably like would have gotten a little more assertive earlier on. It yeah. took me like we were... 10 years into our marriage before I was like, I'm done with this anxiety thing. So, Oh, wow. So he had to deal with that too for 10 years. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah but I don't know if he liked it that I got over my anxiety. Don't know if he oh, liked really? it. Yeah. Suddenly you're your mom and he's like, holy crap. Was suddenly like I have a voice and I'm like, yeah. Before I was like, yeah, okay, you want it spaghetti? We have spaghetti. You want to have chicken? We have chicken. And they're like, wherever you want to go, we'll go. And then after... Mm. 35 or so. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to do what I want to do now. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, do you tell your, it so much. Do you, do you talk to, when you have people come in, obviously, do you talk to them about trying to get over, get, I don't hate to say get over things, but do you try to get them to grow earlier because of all the wasted time? I feel like, uh, I get young couples, I get young couples in yeah. and I go, guys, you have a head start. Like you're yeah. in here, um, within like a couple of years of your relationship. Like it, it takes a lot of people 20 years in to figure stuff to that. They're yeah. work on things. So I get, I think it's really great. I even have folks come in before they're even married to be working on stuff. Well, and that's when they should come in. Everybody should come right. in before yeah. they're married. Why yeah. wait? If there's things to work on, there's things to work on. Do you tell people who are treating their kids like your mother treated you to stop it? Absolutely. I call CPS on them. My mom oh, well. would have gotten us. We would have been taken away. Oh, Same God, I bet. Going. Gosh, that's why you're okay. All right. Hey, here's something. Why don't you have to renew your marriage license? What would you think <laughs> that's a in idea. a world where every 10 years you had or to five, go? Honestly, five years, a five-year thing. Five years. five years, yeah. Five years, you have to renew it. That's funny. how many. But what? Yeah, I know. But how many people would do it? How many people wouldn't I do don't it? Know, like everybody and, would do it. And how do you split things up if you don't renew it? That's the. Is it? Would it just be easier than a divorce? How would you do it? So first, like, how would you renew it? Right? Like, do you have to go take another class? Like, you have to renew your health card. You have to go take it. Like, watch a movie and take the class, or like. If you don't renew it and it expires, does somebody then you take a test house and they come over and go like your uh, marriage license has expired, yeah. separate or get a new license. That's right. Yeah. We'd like a driver's license. Like you don't have to take another test every five years. You just go and re change your license to get a new date unless you screwed something up or, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you check. can't, like, did you screw anything? Yeah. Up? No. Can you check your rubella? Yeah. But if it, if it does lapse, yeah, maybe you'd have to go through something and you would have to, but how do you separate? Cause you have all this stuff in common together. The government decides who gets what, if you let it lapse, you don't decide how to split things up. 
maybe there's like a protocol. Yeah. You have Great an expired approach. license. This is what we have to do. Or you have to pay double to get your license renewed or go to two classes instead of one. Yeah. Well, and your kids, I, what happens to the kids? I think uh, they they go to the state. I don't know. There's something in there. Oops. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be interesting, though. I'm doing all questions like this today. Okay. Is marriage everything you thought it would be? I would say it is way better than I thought it would be. It was, it is way, it, it, before, it like. a good example growing up. Yeah, me either. My parents got divorced at 17. I didn't know, you know, right. my grandparents, yeah. my grandparents stayed married. That's one of the only marriages around me that was stayed, but stayed together. But my grandma was so brutal to my grandpa just all the time. He loved her so much and he was, she was just brutal. Now I did see other relationships that went well and I, I looked at those, but yeah, it's, it just, I, I can't. Not so later, right? So when you're younger, you only see really, well, I guess you can see family member relationships. Like I have a lot of aunts and uncles, a lot of aunts and uncles and grandparents. I had the grandparents had uh, nine kids. So I would see how different relationships were. And I just, thought mine was like the one my parents had the rotten apple in the bucket toss that out look at all these good ones so in my head it wasn't like all relationships are like that it was mm -hmm. like look at all these good ones that was a rotten one weirdness you know so i i didn't really have an expectation that it would be horrible but i didn't know about any behind the scenes stuff i didn't know about like the cuddling and the waking up together and the hanging out and doing stuff like I like all that stuff. I like the companionship stuff. It's like having a best buddy around all the time. You know, you're never like alone. It's mm -hmm. nice. Well, and there's always, well, you're always connected to somebody. And that's exactly what I was looking for because mm -hmm. we had very little affection growing up. My parents, and it's why they got divorced. They were basically business partners. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think my mom wanted that, but my dad wasn't. Very, and that's all I basically saw growing up. So to have this affection, to have somebody, especially my wife, who's very, you know, cuddly, touchy, rub me, do my feet, stuff like that was just because I'm not that way with most people. I'm not, I'm a, people come up to hug me. I'm like, <laughs> so, uh, but to have that and to have somebody that's, that you're is so accessible to be right there. You always have to, to reach out to, to have next to you to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to share that as how anybody would then give that up for a bang in, in the office cloakroom. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. No matter how exciting that know, might right? be. It's a high when people are doing that. It's there's a, either they're starving, like their relationship is mm -hmm. so bad that they get none of that connection. And they just like, I call it like if you're starving and someone throws you a piece of bread, you're going to jump on it. Yeah. Okay. And then they're, or they're just like a gambler. It's just this, it's a high. It's like this, well, it's a, it's almost, season, well, the, but there's it. also a danger to it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and a, uh, it's that fight or flight. You get an endorphins just pumping through your body right. and it just takes over. But, uh, yeah. And I have no care for those endorphins in my body. I just don't know. Don't need it. Don't want it. Don't You're want not it. A okay. Seeking type. No. As you know, from seeing me, the only time in my history that I was high. <laughs> <laughs> I am a high seeking type. Oh, really? I, I love daily highs. Like I love the highs. So well, no. I, well, I like good things that make me feel good. I just don't want artificial or drama ones. Well, highs are highs. Like you can, Maybe you, so here's the thing, like healthy, Give me example. Normal, healthy, normal people can be like, oh yeah, that's a high. I feel good. Uh-huh. That's good. Certain brains are like, that ain't enough. That ain't enough. I need more than that. I need it to be up here. Now I need it to be up here. Mm -hmm. And they end up crossing lines. You're like, nope, this is good enough for me. And I'm, I'm in that area. I do like my highs, but they don't need to be crazy highs. They just like, 
yeah, that was a really nice meal. Or, oh, look, I got myself a cute shirt. And, you know, like that's a feel good, a feel good, a little high. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. I'm, yeah, I get a chai nice. tea. I get a chai tea and a, and a, and a, 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 a little egg white bite. It's a high. Now, if I get a chocolate croissant, I feel bad the rest of the day. So I'm like, oh my God, I just had a chocolate the high, But there was a yeah. hangover. That Too comes much. With it. The fall Not from having a, a chocolate oh my God. croissant, way oh. too crazy. Way, way too, too freaking crazy. So, so, but yeah, I don't understand the, yeah, these people that have to have this, it's like people who smoke a ton of pot or people to do a, you know, uh, although I do believe wiring. that. It's, it's brain. It's yeah. not like, oh, I just want to be, you know, an addict. Like it's yeah. the brain wiring that either doesn't register the little highs where they're like, I don't, I don't even feel it. I don't, that I got no feel good moment yeah. in that they need it like that. Or it's a broken brain from trauma, childhood trauma, mm -hmm. brain trauma, whatever, that the brain is not registering and being okay with. It's like people who eat too much because a certain hormone that leptin or whatever yeah. isn't telling them they're full. So they just keep eating because their brain isn't saying I'm full until their stomach is exploding. And then you're like, oh, I guess I'm full now. That's like with highs too. The brain doesn't always register highs appropriately. And it'll be like, not high yet, not high yet, not feeling it yet until they're like, you know, off the charts. And then they're like, okay, now I feel it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got none of that. And, and I would, I just talked to my dad before the show, 86. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I've, you know, again, never had a bad day. You know what I mean? Never. And my dad has found people who have shot themselves in the head, my brother, but he doesn't like me. We don't take that as a personal trauma. You know what I mean? I can feel that for somebody else and I can say, I want to help you. But so many people are affected personally by things that happen to other people that you see yeah. or deal with. And those people make bad first responders, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, and that's, you see a lot of PTSD from people who have experienced things that other people have experienced them, but they were there. And that I'm a private chat, you a link to, this what? is the brain and what yes. the brain does and why it's wired like that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Well, let's, we, we only have four minutes. So okay. I want to go to the quiz. Am I a bad husband? Of course, from, right. as we know, it's the worst yes. site. There, you don't need a quiz. Like just. Yes, the answer is yes. The yes. answer is yes. No matter what. Number one, your wife bought crystal glasses for both of you to share a good whiskey. How do you react? I'd wash them, pour us a drink, ask her to mind her expenses not react. I get angry when she buys expense crockery. First of all, crockery. Yeah, I don't think that counts as crockery. Glassware, maybe. Glassware, but but crystal glasses first to share whiskey. I get angry. Or even asking her to mind her expenses. Hey, you better mind your damn expenses. I am sure that you would say A. I would Although say A. I would say A, but I wouldn't wash the glasses. I would... <laughs> Not, I don't, she knows I don't drink. So this one doesn't count for us, oh, Okay. but whatever it was she did buy, I would enjoy what it is. Uh, nowadays there was a time in the past. I'd be like, Oh, that was expensive, but, uh, but not anymore. Not at this time in life. Good thing you learned not to do that. Yeah. I learned not that to do that. No, I didn't react to presents. Yeah. I didn't. Well, I didn't really do it. No, not presents. Oh my God. But just buying anything, but you're right. In this case, when it's a present, and she's not going to do anything nuts anyway. And this is dumb. If it was something that was $10,000 and you were 10,000 million in debt, then there might be, you have other problems in your life. So yes, yeah. she's a bad husband. What do you do if your wife disagrees with your opinion? I feel sad and disconnected. <laughs> I, try, really emotional. I try to explain my side to her. I really don't mind disagreements. This often leads to some heated quarrels. Mm. Yeah, um, I think between B and C, where it's like, yeah. I'll debate, I'll get in there yeah. and debate and chat a bit, but I'm not gonna, like, get all emotional about it. If it's, you know, let's say if it does get a little, let's say I share an opinion, he shares the opinion, I go, I don't know, I think it like this, this, this. And he says that, that, that if anyone gets emotional, I'll be like, okay, we're done talking about it. Like, it's, it's too. So. I do discuss it. I don't mind it. 
So somewhere in there. I want to discuss it when there's, I want to think about it for a while and then discuss it so that I can have cogent thoughts, not arguments to say. I like debating. I do like to debate and I like to cite resources and stuff like that. Oh my God. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do with your husband when you're talking about a problem. Research (laughs) Research says, and he's like, I don't care about just pick up the damn thing. Just pick it up. That's all I want. No. Research says, do you watch movies or TV? Oh, we missed one. And that was, do you share good a good intimate relationship? I think the answer is you should. This physical and or emotional. Yes. Does it say emotional on there? No, but it should. It should. Well, emotional especially. Because, yeah, you can have a fit. You know, a lot of people that hate each other have a lot of sex. So They, they can. Yes, they yeah. can. I think a lot, I think that keeps a lot of relationships together that should have broken up a long time ago is the fact that they have good sex and that's so what it. what would your answer be? Uh, my answer for is emotional in there too. I'm going to, I'm going to lump them together. Physical and emotional. Yeah. Oh no, really? Well, cause we can, we, we can talk about it a lot. We can grow together. We can figure out, you know, we're, we're, we're always talking about both of those things. And how they've changed and how they've grown what's, and how they've adapted. Oh, I haven't read any of them. Uh, it's not the only aspect for a relationship. Well, it's not, but so what? Uh, not uh, sometimes if we haven't fought. I like BDSM, but what is BDSM? Oh, Brad. Big dogs <laughs> sucking mice. Bad. Brad. 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 Bored dystopian symmetry <laughs> oh movement my gosh. i i believe it's bondage dominance sadomasochism uh okay no uh how did that even get in there <laughs> i don't even know how, how the hell did that even get in there i like this stuff she does not so we go in different areas so i ex- no Okay, this is the worst four answers ever on the planet Earth. How about, do you share a good intimate relationship? Yes, we do. <laughs> there's we're, we're, no we're yes good. answer. There's no yes answer. Uh, there's a no, but there's no yes. There's no I'm, and there's meh. Meh, yeah. I Yes, no, we do. <laughs> and, we, and we spend a good amount of time talking about it and joking, but also being understanding, supportive, understanding yeah. the, how things change and evolve. Oh God. Okay. One more. And then we're done. Do you watch movies or TV series together? Eh, sometimes. So look at the answers. I don't um, like what she okay. likes. <laughs> this is our biggest stress activity sometimes, but not every day. The only thing we have watched together was our wedding video. Okay. We've never watched the wedding video. 30 years, no wedding. Who's going to watch this? Nobody wants to watch that. Nobody watches that. No. I'm going to say C on this one because we have shows we watch together. Morning show, Ted Lasso, stuff like that. But then she loves everything. Every show. You want to know what my husband makes me watch with him? What? The Bachelor. Uh, Antiques Roadshow. Nice. Boy, that's old. I think Vera. It's called Vera. On Don't know PBS. what that is. It's some British lady. Wow. Detective. Your husband's a um, snooty son of a gun, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And then it, wait. <laughs> um, cat videos. What videos? Cat. Cats. Cat videos. Here, look at this cat doing crap. Yes. He will watch <sighs> cat videos all day long. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is... So that's Rough. how we bond. If I find a good cat video, I'm like, look, honey. And then he's all into what I'm watching. And then he's like, look at that. Wow. Leads right to sex. So uh, she doesn't like, I like to watch like Shark Tank and stuff like that. I like uh, businessy. I like, she likes some home improvement, some food stuff, but I like all of it. She loves drama. I don't like dramas. I don't like horror. I don't like things that are boring. Those are the things I don't like. Uh, but so you uh, might not like, those PBS monotonous shows. Oh, horrible. Horrible. He horrible. So much. I love musicals. She can't stand it. Huh? 
Schmigadoon. I like musicals. Schmigadoon is a really fun, silly musical that she hates. Can't stand it. I have never even heard of that. Of course, I've heard of Brigadoon, the movie. Oh, this the is old. a parody with Cecily Strong and Keegan Michael. What? He, where they they are in a relationship and they get lost in Schmigadoon, where you can't leave until you're prove you're in love. This is the first I've heard of that. Is it on Netflix or Hulu or something? Yes, it's on one of those. Yes. Really? You're yeah. I, immediately I go yeah. watch it immediately. Okay. It's hilarious. And everybody I, has to, you're will. forced to sing. You have to sing. Only <laughs> Keegan Michael Key will not sing. Everybody else is forced to sing. And it is it no really good. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. Next week we'll have Joe and every here and we'll do that. But other than that, thank you, everybody. I gotta go drive to Frankfurt and Baltimore. Donna will actually next week get her hair done and put on some clothing. It'll be great. Mm -hmm.